Ever since I made a video about my heart and my heart arrhythmia and electrolytes and how I used electrolytes to cure my arrhythmia, um, I've been promising to make this video about calcium because calcium is one of the electrolytes and it is the most common electrolyte in your body. But it is very unusual to be deficient in calcium. You will be deficient in calcium if you're malnourished or starving and unfortunately there are still a lot of children in very poor countries who suffer from rickets which is a deficiency of calcium but it's highly unlikely that you have a calcium deficiency if you have arrhythmia it can be associated with a calcium problem but it's not a shortage of calcium and the same goes for osteoporosis osteoporosis is not a deficiency in calcium Welcome to Shape Fixer. I'm Andrew Tunstall. I'm a nutrition consultant and a lifestyle coach. And this video is about calcium. And I'm trying to keep to the theme of electrolytes. So I'm going to talk about calcium as an electrolyte, but I'm going to have to expand a little bit around it to give it the correct context. Now, when we talk about electrolytes, and I have a video specifically on electrolytes, which I will link below, Calcium is one of the electrolytes that's very important in the functioning of your muscles and the electrical gradients across the membranes. I'm trying not to use too much big terminology here. So that the electrical firing and the messages between your nerves and your muscles are correct. Which would suggest why if you have some issue around calcium that a heart arrhythmia is one of the symptoms of a calcium problem. Now, the problem with calcium, unlike other electrolytes which you can be deficient in, is that very often you have too much. Now you shouldn't be able to have too much because if your body is functioning the way it should, then excess calcium in your system gets moved across into your bones for storage, which is fantastic because it keeps your bones stronger, and the electrolyte levels and the balances and the calcium level in your soft tissues, in your muscles, is kept at the level that it needs to be and you can call on some more calcium from the bones when you need it. The problem that a lot of us have is we have too much calcium in the soft tissue. It's not going to the bones. So now you have a deficiency in the bones, you have weak bones, possibly even osteoporosis, which is then diagnosed as a shortage of calcium, but it's not. It's a shortage of calcium in the bones. But you have plenty of calcium, it's just all in your soft tissues. Why does it not go from the soft tissue to the bones? That's a good question and I will address that in a minute. But let's understand what happens when you have too much calcium in your soft tissue. You will develop arrhythmias. One of the symptoms of a buildup of calcium in the soft tissue is arrhythmias. You also might have a dry hacky cough, that could be a clue that you have an issue with calcium in your soft tissue. But the solution to this will be to ensure your body is able to take spare calcium and move it into the bones, because that's what it wants to do. And how do you do that? Vitamin D. Vitamin D is produced by your own body in your skin when you expose your skin to sunlight on a regular basis. And in our culture, we don't get enough sunlight very, very, the vast majority of us don't get enough sunlight and we've been intimidated into thinking the sun is bad for us and it's dangerous and sun cream and hats and glasses and shade and stay indoors or we have a lifestyle that is indoors anyway. Um, and so we don't get enough vitamin D. We don't manufacture enough vitamin D and when you're low in vitamin D you cannot transport calcium into your bones. So you'll end up ultimately with osteoporosis but with a bad calcium buildup in your soft tissues, which can lead to the formation of calcium deposits, which can make arthritis worse. You'll have this cough, you'll have these arrhythmias. And if you're really unlucky, your doctor will say, oh, you've got osteoporosis, you need a calcium supplement. Then you're on the slippery slope to it all getting even worse. The solution is vitamin D, sunlight on your skin without sun cream. Now, please don't go out and get burnt because that's just daft. So if it's really difficult for you to get sort of 20 minutes a day of sun, take a vitamin D supplement, 
Vitamin D3, not D2. D2 is a plant-based vitamin, which your body is very difficult for your body to absorb. D3 is in the form for absorption by a mammal. And yes, you're, you're a mammal. I, I hope you're a mammal. All right, so if you've got an arrhythmia and a dry cough and you think it might be a calcium issue because you're aware that you don't get enough sun, either get sun or take a vitamin D3 supplement and you may find, you may find that you cure your arrhythmia and your cough. Now, this is not the only cause of arrhythmia. There are plenty of causes of arrhythmias. So look at all my other videos on electrolytes and try and figure out which is the one that is possibly causing you the problem. The only other thing that can happen, that could be happening, is that you may have a problem with your parathyroid. And so even with the vitamin D, your body is still not moving calcium into your bones because your parathyroid gland in your neck is responsible for metabolizing and, and, and running this process. Then you need to see an endocrinologist and have your parathyroid tested. But before you do that, have some vitamin D and see if that makes a difference. So there you go. You may be coughing, you may have arrhythmia, you may be tired, you may be getting cramps, and it may just be that your calcium is building up in your body and not going into your bones. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Um, and share this video with your friends.